So today I'm going to show you how to create a really trendy glitch effect in any of your photographs using Photoshop. So let's get started. So to begin with, I'm using this image here of a cityscape shooting up towards some big skyscrapers. Um, now you can use any photograph you want really, but thinking about the actual effect that it's quite modern, it's quite technical, you may want an image that is quite clean looking uh, to suit the effect itself. But by all means, if you just want to give it a go to begin with, try any image. So firstly, what we need to do is convert this image to black and white. So really the easiest way to do that in Photoshop is to go to image adjustments and then come down to black and white. You don't have to choose a particular um, preset you can if you want you can customize your own this is really just kind of gives the best kind of base effect really so I'm looking for something kind of quite clean quite neutral I'm going to stick with that lighter tone for this version um, I'm actually also going to crop the image as well now again you don't need to do this I just think for the purposes of this image it possibly does suit a crop because we've got buildings towards the far side that are a little bit stretched out and there's, there's quite a bit of sky there so I think just ready for my own kind of OCD. I just want to make it nice and neat so we get a good version uh, for this uh, this tutorial. So I think we'll just crop it there. Now what we need to do is duplicate this layer that we've got, this background layer, because currently it's a background layer and it's locked. All we need to do is simply go up to layer and then come down to duplicate layer. Um, and then you can give this layer a name. I'm actually going to call this one green because um, you'll see why in a very quick second. Now what we're going to do with our green layer here is double click on the layer so we can get our layer styles panel and then down halfway down the middle of this uh, initial blending option we've got options of channels of RGB which is red green and blue. Now what we want to do is actually ch turn off the red in this instance so we're going to just lose that for a second so we're just keeping ourselves with the green and blue. Now effectively we want to do the same again so we want to duplicate this layer so then we've called that one green. It could be called green blue, I suppose, or no red, just whatever mnemonic makes sense in your head to be able to remember what you've done with each layer. So we're going to duplicate that layer and then we're going to call this one blue. And then effectively, all we're going to do with this layer is double click on the layer again to get the layer style and then turn off green. OK, so hopefully you can kind of see the process that we've got a layer with all the color channels activated one just with the green and blue and then just one with the blue. Now what we need to do next is starting to shift these layers and separate them a little bit in terms of their perspective just to start to reveal those little fringes of colour. So um, what we can do to begin with, I think we'll just turn the top layer off, that blue one off and we'll just work on the green for a minute. We can't change the background or move the background because it's locked but all we need to do is just go to our middle layer which we've called green and just using the arrow keys we can just offset that Every time you press an arrow key, it moves your layer by one pixel and you can see it's starting to reveal those alternative colors, those greens and those reds, which makes it a little bit more 3D. It's starting to add that effect. So you can adjust it how much you want. You can have it kind of, uh, kind of more offset if you prefer than how I've done it. It's totally up to you. Now I'm going to go to the top layer and reactivate that. So this is the blue layer and I'm going to do the same in the opposite direction. So I'm just offsetting the layer so you can actually see how the two kind of separate themselves a little bit. You may also want to offset it not so much kind of on the x-axis but on the on the y and actually kind of push it upwards a little bit so we can get some of that kind of effect coming a little bit more pronouncedly on the building. So it, it, there's, there's no particular way in which you have to actually add this effect or how you actually uh, combine it with all the other layers. It really is just personal preference ultimately. So what we're going to do now is put all our layers together here in a little group. So to do that, we simply click on the top one, hold down shift, click the bottom one, and then just come up to the little menu bar on the layers panel. And then we just go new group. It'll ask you to name the group, but there's no particular need to, to name the group in this instance. And then all we're going to do is then just slide each of these images into the group itself. So you can see it indents itself and then actually if we do the exact same with the bottom layer, we have to unlock it first. We can now put all three into a layer, into a group, sorry. Now what we actually want to do is duplicate that group. So we can do that quite simply by going to layer and duplicate group. So we'll call this one group two, just so we've got good housekeeping. So we've got our base ones there 
and then the exact same again here. Now in group two, let's grab all those three layers. And we're going to highlight them, click on the top one, hold down shift, click the bottom one and right click. I'm going to press merge layers. So we've got an entirely merged version here. Now what we'll actually do is move that out of the group. We can actually delete the group if you don't want it anymore. This is where we start to add the actual glitching. As much as we've got the color glitching, we also need the visual glitch uh, in terms of the horizontal. To do that, it's super simple. We can just grab the rectangular marquee tool from our vertical toolbar. And now it's a case of just drawing some very small, some narrow marquee areas on our image. Then making sure we've got the move tool selected and just going back to our arrow keys on our keyboard, we're just now going to Go left and right, whichever way you want. It tends to work best on a horizontal as opposed to going vertical in these instances. And just keep pressing it a few times. You can do it with your mouse, but sometimes it's uh, it moves a little bit quicker and a little bit further, and sometimes you can move up and down. So I'm just going to use the, the uh, arrow keys just to make it a little bit more cleaner and easier. Now, once you've moved it into position, hopefully you can see some of those colors have shifted from where they were originally. If I just now go to select and deselect, you see that it's been offset by well, probably about 10, 15 pixels or so. And now you can actually see that little bit of a glitching starting to occur. And effectively now it's the exact same process doing it across whatever else you want on your image. So just making that selection, still working on that top layer there, and then just pushing it left or right a little bit, and kind of create that glitch however you so wish. And there we have it, we've created our glitch effect. It looks really cool. It does actually work very, very well with this kind of modern urban landscape that we've got there, but give it a go on any image, even if you're just trying it out. Once you've finalized your effect, then just make sure you return back to your layers panel and then just flatten your image. So you've got a completely flat layer, which you can then save as a PNG or a TIFF or even a JPEG file, obviously, if you're gonna be using it to upload for the web. But there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial about how to create this sci-fi glitch effect in Photoshop. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thanks very much for watching.